Dre Brown, I saw the Twitter page for you, Old Man Brown. I mean, how different is Dre Brown today versus when you were trying to get him here all those years ago? Well, I think the thing about it is that I keep on telling people me and Dre played together way back in the day. <laughs> nah, I mean, the thing about it, those are the reasons why you coach college football, is because to see a kid like that go through everything he went through, and then, you know, see him after spring game and spring practice cry because he finally made it through spring, to being a guy today that, he knows he has a, a, a role. He knows his role is going to be important, and to see him be successful day by day. So he's humble enough to understand that it could be taken away like that, but also he's focused enough to know that he has to contribute for us to be successful. And he really can move. I mean, he look. I think. What, what have your impressions been of him through four camps or four well, practices here? I think the biggest thing is that he's he's focused on everything, all the little things, whether it's blocking, whether it's um, in the pass game, um, understanding um, his responsibilities. Um, he's self enough to know that other guys got to get in um, but the most I mean he's he was a track guy when we was recruiting before so he's always had that speed and um, you know we watch our individual drills and um, meetings and be able to and I asked him I said what knee was um, that you heard and he's like both of them and you can't tell you know so my thing is you know be impressed by his consistency, um, his commitment, and on um, the way things are going right now. I mean, it's not a super young room, but there are some young guys to have somebody who's been through, I mean, literally, man, everything a college kid could, could have to experience. He's done it. What, what is his role with some of those younger guys? The same thing. I mean, these guys are sitting there. Um, they, they lean on each other's shoulders. You know, they lean on each other's shoulders for, you know, um, experience purposes, um, for school purposes. Um, you know, if somebody gets hurt, they understand all that. So um, these guys are, you know, it's a great room of guys that you, you know, you have a chance to be in, and, and right now they are pushing each other to the full extent. You wanted to get him here, you know, when you're recruiting him. What's it going to mean to you to see him play at the end of the season, his last football game? Like I said, with, with, with college coaching, those that's what you do it for. You know, to see guys like that. You know, we talk about it all the time. You know, these guys haven't played in bowl games. They haven't had a chance to be successful. Um, they always are laughing. They were the laughing stock. And, you know, to see them work hard and not accept mediocrity, you know, is, is a good um, pickup to start camp. Obviously, Reggie carried, you know, the lion's share of the, uh, you know, handle the lion's share of the carries last year. Now with everybody healthy back, you know, Mike healthy, uh, Dre obviously healthy, and guys like uh, Rayvon Bonner and Kenyon Sim stepping in, just what do you ex uh, expect out of this room as camp uh, grows on? Well, I told them one through ten, and I'm number ten. You know, we all have to hold each other accountable. You know, we have to put ourselves in a position to understand that things that we do are a reflection of everybody. So, you know, we there's times in practice that Kenyon and and Kari have run with the ones, you know, and, and Dre and Reggie have run with the threes. And they don't look at me like I'm crazy for putting them in there because they understand that everybody has a responsibility. Um, we got to save legs, but at the same time, everybody's got to get their chance to run with the group one and group two. You know, so when the game time comes and, you know, we're playing in November and December, you know, one of those guys is going to have to have a role in, the, in, the, in our offense, and so we're preparing them now. Did you recruit Chase Brown and Toledo? We did, uh, and, and, and I guess we did from a standpoint of um, from that position, from that position aspect. But me personally, no, never had any contact with him. Um, great kid, he's, you know, he, he's one of them guys that you, you never can yell at him because he's always smiling. He's all, he's always open arm for information, you know. So, and and you can see, like we said earlier, that room has a lot of long teeth in age, but also has a lot of youth and experience um, that we will be good for some years. What do you think he eventually adds to your group? I mean, I know you're just seeing for a couple of years. I think passion, um, commitment. Um, I think he has some good speed. He's good twitched. Um, you know, he, he's, he's one of them tough guys. He rolls his shorts up, tucks them in. He wants you to see his muscles and, and know that he's been working out all summer. But, you know, he's, he's one of them guys that is going to work and make us better. So, you know, we're excited about him. Is that one of the easier recruitments? Because his mom out here was pushing pretty hard to get him here. Yeah, mom, <laughs> brother. And, you know, it's funny because the last couple of I told them every day they got to give me a fun fact. One of them, they each got a day on the calendar. So they, 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 they're like, well, fun fact about what? I said, I want to know why you came to school here, you know, and, and then why, what's going to keep you here? And so, you know, Reggie, you know, talked about, you know, something yesterday, which was kind of interesting in history of Illinois. But, you know, those guys are, are in the room and they're, they're striving and starving for information about the university and how successful we are. Pretty much all.